right, and welcome to another edition of ABP Beer for Breakfast. I am Danielle from Mornings on 91X. I've got my beer expert, beer enthusiast, Paul Segura, brewmaster from Carl Strauss. And today we are welcoming Pariah Brewing Company. I've got Joseph, their sales manager. And I've also got Brian, the owner and brewmaster. What's going on, guys? Not a lot, not a lot. Having yeah. fun, you know? New year. I know, yeah. right? Crazy. 2018. Coming up on your one-year anniversary. Yeah, absolutely. Right around February. Congrats what on weekend that, are we doing man. on that, Brian? Yeah, the weekend of February 11th will be our one year. So we're getting nice. rolling on the details That's awesome. on that. Yeah. It should be a lot of fun. I mean, you can... Did you think we'd make it this far? No. <laughs> I didn't think so either. We just like, got it out a little time trying to get there. You a big party planned? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah working definitely. on it. Definitely. We're going to have a big, big blowout, Pro probably do some uh, uh, specialty glassware for it as well. And uh, right just on. make sure we have, you know, big blowout and really just uh, ring in the new year because... As, as we all know, not a lot of people get to make it to that point. That's you know, right. Brewery, Absolutely. So it's, it's a tough it's a good town thing. with 150 some breweries and to last a year and make a good name for yourselves as Absolutely. you guys have done. Absolutely. We should drink to that. Oh, right? cheers. <laughs> cheers to that. Cheers. Yeah. There we go. What do we have in here? Got an IPA. This is India sure. Bust, our 7.2% IPA with uh, Idaho 7, Citra, and Galaxy Hop. So this one was. Um, Brian's brainchild by influenced by another brewer. If you'd like to talk about that, yeah, the uh, the eleven barrel IPAs. If you guys remember that whole situation, mm -hmm. um, we remember. Oh yes, oh, we yes. Yes. yes, yeah, we had a hand. Might have been a talk. <laughs> Might have been a talk in San Diego. Yeah, I was hanging out with uh, I was hanging out at Resident actually when those were released, and uh, Blair came up to me and I, uh, Scott Blair of Hamilton's in South Park and was talking to me and. Uh, basically said hey you know i was asking him what you know what the thought was behind it and all that stuff and he's like well why don't you just brew one and i'm like okay like what's the deal like well you have to use idaho 7 and you have to it has to be seven percent and use idaho 7 and i actually contracted a small bit of idaho 7 as we impulsively do sometimes the brewers are like yeah i'll get a couple boxes screw it so i had it i had it in house and i had no excuse to use it so i just brewed it and I think it turned out pretty good. It's such a hot hop and it just, it just really, I'm really happy that people have attached to it as especially specifically for using IPAs because it just brings so much to the table. It really does. And I get the galaxy in there too. It's got a really nice orangey, grapefruity. I mean, you taste uh, a lot of goodness in there. Um, very clear IPA though, as opposed to what a lot of other people are doing these days. Um, yeah. Hats off to that. I yeah. mean, uh, <laughs> there's definitely uh, there's definitely a lot of time of me trying to uh, push out beer and Brian looking at me and going, no, it's crashing. You need to calm down. I'm like, but we need to get this beer out. And he goes, it's crashing. Calm down. It'll so get there when the it gets there. this is where the art comes in and this is where the business comes in. A little bit. A little bit. A little it's bit. It's got to balance each other. Yeah. Um, I have to say, after trying the different varieties of the 11 barrel, including Beachwoods up in Long Beach for their Solidarity yeah. IPA, I would say you guys hit it like right on the nail, like this is a phenomenal beer. Thank you very much. It really is. Yeah, I, I, can, I can definitely say that um, myself having been a professional in this industry for, for a few years, when I was offered this position, I interviewed for this position, there was the point where I was also interviewing them for this job as well, where I, I wanted to see, because I knew Brian previously at his, uh, when he worked at Stone, and I knew what he had done in the industry about Gozas and some of the different things that he really helped to bring to the table here in San Diego. Once I started tasting the beers that we actually had as our core brand, it was a no-brainer for me anymore. It was like, I can attach myself to this brand. This is an amazing beer. I don't have to go out there and try and sell something that isn't good. I can mm -hmm. still look at people yeah. and go, you can, you can not like me. You can, you can love me. It doesn't matter. Do you like the beer? Yeah. Because it's good. It's good yeah. and solid. And I don't have to worry about that anytime we come out with something. Right. Crazy ideas come out of this head, or maybe I pitch a crazy idea to him and he makes it work. <laughs> he makes it work. work. A black Berliner Weiss. Who would do a black Berliner Weiss? You know, we did yeah. one and it, 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 it's worked out pretty well. It's, a, it's fun, it's weird, but it was just a pitch. And then this gentleman's head starts rolling around, and all of a sudden I'm like, this is a really dumb idea, but we're going to do it. Wow, well, it tastes great. Well, sometimes what seems dumb, you know, on paper, you do it and it, you know, or sometimes it takes a savant like Brian to go, wait, no, this will work. Trust me. And then he brews it and it works out. And, but I like the fact that you guys are pushing the envelope and, you know, black, you know, black whatever. Berliner black Berliner Weiss. Black Berliner Weiss. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, <clears throat> and we were talking about this right before we started airing how I like, you know, I, I think 
to some degree, competitions kind of stunt creativity. If you're trying to brew always toward a competition or to make bitters fit neatly into a style, you're not exercising creativity. So black Berliner Weiss, that's like going, screw the style it was a it categories. Was a, it was a bet that was basically placed early on with us uh, uh, becoming a brewery. There was a, um, a certain number that I threw at Brian about what if I sell this, this, this number of barrels this week? And he goes, that's crazy. But if you do that, I'll let you come up with a recipe. So I made that and then surpassed it a little bit. And he said, well, congratulations to you. And we'll be releasing that beer somewhere uh, about late, late January, so not too far from now. We're probably weeks. somewhere in that area. Yeah. So it'll be a lot of fun, but we basically took a standard Berliner Weiss. We threw some Sinmar at it. You know, really get yeah. that get that darker color in there yeah. without uh, giving too much of the roasty flavor characteristic. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's it's fun. It's interesting. It's the right time of year for something like that. But it also gives you that kind of kind of the master of disguise, or or or, or even that naughty sauce, like opposite end of it. Take a stout, make it golden. You know, yeah. let's take something bright, tart, and acidic, and let's make it look as black as night, and really just have fun with it. Well, for people who don't know what Cinemar is, <laughs> yeah. we should explain oh, let's, that. Let's, let's go with uh, that, It's a malt-based product. Uh, yeah. It's just an extract of, uh, of uh, roasted barley that's like basically debittered. I learned that the biggest user of Cinemar is the apple juice industry. Interestingly enough, I was, I was to thinking make the like, apple juice more golden colored. Yeah, because as Americans, yeah. we couldn't tolerate apple juice being clear, so they yeah. have to make it look like <laughs> what you think apple juice looks like. Yeah. So that that kind of tripped me out. I was like, well, I'm like, who are you? Who uses this stuff? You know, on large scale, and right. that's what I found the apple juice industry. Like, okay, cool. Well, and I think it speaks <laughs> volumes to have a brewmaster owner be like, yeah, if you do this go for it and like kind of like let that creativity come out and be like totally be down with it. I feel like you don't see that a lot. It's, there's, there's an entire ethos that goes around our, our, our brewery that I don't think a lot of people really understand. They see the name Pariah and maybe people consciously know that a Pariah means an outsider. But when, when, I was, when we were speaking about, you know, dumb ideas or anything like that, we thrive on that. We don't want you to know exactly what's going to next come out of us as a brewery. You may think it's going to be, oh, we're going to do, th you're going to do this thing because that's the trend right now. And we'll be like, we'll take your trend, we'll top that, and we'll have some fun with it at the same time. And, yeah. then, and then you can deal with what the product that's being put down and tell us whether it's delicious or not. Yeah. We are pariahs. We each individually are pariahs, and together we're even a better group because of it. Well, it's kind of almost, I mean, when I think of Pariah and, you know, as you say, like an outlier, I almost think of it as like the island of misfit toys. Exactly. You know, we're, exactly. we're all like kind of this kind of misfit trying to figure it out, and, but we'll do it together. Yeah, every new hire, that's what they're told, is welcome to the island of misfit toys. <laughs> it's so funny. One of my old jobs, that, that's, you open the handbook and that's what it was. It was like, welcome to the island of misfit toys. And I think that it's important that everyone has a spot. You know, I think the beer industry has come to a place where everybody's looking for what's new and shiny, what they haven't had yet. You know, there's a lot of beers out there that have been around for a while. And to offer stuff like, you know, people have never had before. Yeah, absolutely. That's like, like what people want. That's the why next beer that we have right here, you know, with Erotic City. What is this? You know, this is a Belgian strong with uh, orange blossom honey, muscat grapes, and grains of paradise. It's kind of a beer mead wine hybrid. It doesn't really fit within a style. Mm -hmm. It is the Misfit Toy beer, nice. the island of Misfit Toys. Oh. It really is that beer, and um, also heavily influenced by um, a certain purple individual who is uh, passed on, but that's what we'll say yes. of that. Right. Cheers to that artist. <laughs> right? Well, cheers to being Misfit Toys. Cheers. Yes. And pariahs. <laughs> This has a little bit of a mead-like uh, aroma. Brian's a very big fan of that orange blossom honey, and he can tell you a lot more about that. Yeah, we use it in our wit as well, but um, this is actually my wife's idea. She said she wanted a beer that was about 33% each between beer, mead, and wine. Uh, obviously, for legal reasons, we had to dial that back uh, to 50%, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we use a really awesome local orange blossom honey. We use muscat grape white muscat grape from up north of us in uh, the wine region. And then uh, in addition to our Pilsner malt base, it's a little bit of honey malt in there just to accentuate the honey itself. Um, 
Grains of Paradise for a white pepper, almost a little bit of a more yeast uh, boosting character. And then uh, we fermented it with the uh, French Saison. Wow, it's delicious. It is really good. The oh. nose on this beer is, I think, what absolutely sends people for a loop is you just, you, you pick up a beer that somebody just served you and you're like, yeah, I ordered that. Okay, what what exactly is going on here? Like, are you pouring me wine? Is this a mead? What's 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 going on here? And it's it's turned a lot of people that are really not beer drinkers into beer drinkers. It's one of the one of the more popular uh, offerings in our tasting room, actually. Yeah, in our tasting there, room, it does really well <clears throat> over there on El, on El Cajon Boulevard, North Park. It, it just becomes this thing that people come in and they start tasting Erotic City, and then they just have more and more, and we have to look at them and go. You're Ubering, right? <laughs> Something? Because this is nine percent. This is not. Yeah. This is not your. Right. This is not Even your dad's tour's life, you know. Uh -huh. This is something that you have to watch out for. But it's it's complex, and as it warms up, it starts to really develop new layers, and different parts of the profile really start to come out that weren't really weren't really there before. And I'm gonna try to warm this up a little so, bit. San Diego's erotic <laughs> city. So I got I got I got to ask this, Paul. So yeah. if we you know go back to GABF a few months ago, and they're talking about the orange blossom honey would this go into that california common that strauss won in or would this go into a different category so we won for an orange blossom honey california common which was in a honey beer category mm -hmm. so this probably could actually yes be entered into the honey beer okay. category yeah we put it into a uh, belgian specialty ale subcategory c other and uh, they sent back scorecards. They said, this is good, but we don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, I put we it in it, other, man. We dig it, we dig it, but we don't know what it is. <laughs> it's so really even good. for us, when we oh, sent nice. our beer off, we had, a, we had, it was in the honey beer category, but we had to specify what style of beer, yeah. you know, that we added honey to. Mm -hmm. And it was orange blossom honey. It's, it's funny, I think we must have got it from the same place because this has the same orangey aroma. Is it Melgies? Uh, perhaps, yeah. yeah I'm having in, trouble uh, remembering now. It was actually one of our other brewers that bought it. I forget where exactly they are. A Temecula area. Yeah, but, yeah I think it was. They yeah. do a, a really good wildflower in, the, in this orange blossom as well, but yeah. It smells and tastes like it's got orange in it. Yeah. You know, and it's just the, the honey itself. Yep. It's really and if in the beer industry we can keep, keep help keep bees alive, why don't we do that? Yeah. yeah. Right? We like bees. They need our help. Yeah, they need important. all the help they can get. Beer is agriculture, period. But you also get the sort of Venice uh, character in the finish, man. It's, it's like tannic. adds another, yeah. Adds it's only 20 layer. views for a 9 ABV beer, but I think it drinks, oh. it drinks balance, I think, just because of the tannin, you know? Uh, we did a, a version of this that actually had red uh, grape in it. We did a Petite Syrah, and I had to take the IBUs from 20 all the way down to 10 just because it, literally we did a test batch, and at 20 IBUs, it was way too tannic and just dry, like like chalky dry. So, yeah, yeah the wine is definitely doing a lot of the drying out. It's probably the driest beer we make overall, I think, in terms of finishing gravity. It's like 1.8. It's very dry. Wow. Yeah. So, like, like, like brewers for dummies. What do you have to do to get the IBU down half of what it's coming out? A lot less hops. Okay. Yeah, we literally cut the hops in half for this uh, beer, sister beer. Um, do you lose flavor when you do that, or? No, these are all early, early hop, flavor hop. So you don't really get any particular character out of the hop other than just the bitterness compounds. Okay. So it's just to, it's just to balance. There should be no hop presence in this beer at all. Yeah, this this mm -hmm. this this type of beer is going to be a very small addition of hops to begin yeah. with. This isn't your this isn't your triple IPA where you're fighting a huge malt bill and you want to make that hop really the you know the showcase of it. Right. This is just a style that well, it, you don't want it, the hops interfering with all the other goodness that's in there though. Right. Maybe you just want all throw that a stuff to show in. through. Handful of Counts. No, that spear, sprinkle, spear that sprinkle guy. You know, we're just gonna <laughs> sprinkle like the hops in. <laughs> a little foam bay action going on, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely an interesting beer, man. Um, very drinkable. Yeah. I can see you guys turning people on to beer who, who might be wine people or whatever. And it comes in a teku glass really? as well. A so teku. <laughs> what's, wait, what's a teku glass? A uh, teku is a type of stemware that kind of flares. Um, and Lost Abbey uses them a lot. Yeah, oh, so okay. they're, they're really okay. they're really beautiful glasses. And for your uh, specifically for somebody that's brought into a tasting room and goes, I don't really drink beer. I'm a wine drinker. You present them <laughs> something like that, and they go, Well, aren't I fancy? <laughs> yeah. Pinkies out. Yep. Yep. Pinkies, Pinkies out. out. Pinkies <laughs> out. <laughs> so let's talk about your guys's location a little bit because you're part of that little 
pub thing right there in North Park. You know, we've had your guys' neighbors on both uh, San Diego Brewing and Epic. Can you guys kind of explain what that is and where you are? Uh, yeah, we're right across, basically right across the street uh, from Tiger Tiger and directly across the street from Lips. Usually when we say that, people are like, got it. Uh, <laughs> so when you do brunch, go to brunch afterwards. I bet you, I bet you see some you know? interesting stuff outside your window. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is still just North Park in general, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're right there. We're and then you have the front building. Uh, the front suite is San Diego, and then the back building is Epic, and we're right in the middle. So um, when we didn't know who was getting what suite until literally like they handed us like the executed leases, and we ended up getting the middle one. And I think it's kind of cool because you have San Diego up front representing like classic, old school, just traditional old faithful kind of business in the front, which gives, I think, the two of us in the back credibility. Mm -hmm. Then in the back, you have Epic doing like West Coast IPA and a lot of throw, throwback German styles that are great to see coming back. Mm -hmm. And then it lets us both physically and uh, philosophically sit right in the middle as weirdos. That's weird. You know? <laughs> it also, it's also very nice because those sweets can turn over. You can turn that you can turn that suite over to another brewery, so it's not like you know we're always going to be within that location, and these other breweries are always going to be there. There will be new influences that come in that affect us, or that we affect as well. It's rare that you get to see brewers with, with from other brewing companies that you know they step outside to have a smoke break or use the joint restroom, and um, they get to talk. They get to talk shop. Usually you got to drive down the road, even in North Park, you got to walk down the road a little bit to go see your buddies over at the other breweries. We're all right there. We pass by each other's doors all the time and there's a lot of back and forth intellectually and, 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 and professionally that goes on there. And it's, it yeah. makes it for a really fun, interesting environment. It, it showcases that San Diego really isn't a competition when it comes to breweries. We're a family. This yeah. is a very large industry that's supported by a very small population of people that actually work in it and we are we all friends and we're all family and it's nice to be able to see that rub up against each other every single day i see the ultimate yes. collaboration Amen. for collab palooza next year <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to that, man. very well said thank you Ooh. oh what's this this is mamba mode this is an 8.1 so like, percent kind of, kind of the shoulder mango right off the bat 8.1 <laughs> percent double ipa new england style unfiltered with yeah. ella enigma mosaic and idaho seven, seven. yeah so if you want to take Bella, your awesome Enigma, Mosaic, and Idaho 7. So you want to take your cool hot hops, throw it all into one beer, this is what you're going to get. <laughs> and that's it. what we got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. It's super fruity, super tropical. Hmm. For sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's... I get like stone fruit. I get mango. I get a little bit of citrus. There's a lot going on. And it's, it's, it's okay that we are prized and we try and buck traditions every so often and you know you know our shirts our logo says no practice is sacred but it's okay to grab a beer of, of a, a grab a trend in beer and be able to say you know what we can do that too let's try it and you know what how we're going to do it is we're going to take all the raddest hops you can think of and we're going to throw it in there and see how everybody likes that and it comes out with this beautiful tropical fruit stone fruit you know kind of even fruit almost going off you yeah know what i mean like in the background of it it's just it's amazing it's it's, it's a lot of fun so and we kind of we kind of touched on this earlier what is both of your guys's backgrounds because i always find it fascinating where people come from so brian where did you come from uh, I'm a musician by trade, uh, made no money doing it, and I realized how much of a vacuumous uh, plastic industry that is, and I wanted to do something. I'm a, I'm a creator destroy kind of guy, so I have to do something creative, otherwise I'll start destroying myself or, <laughs> or others. And uh, I started brewing beer. I like cooking, so I started brewing beer off of a Food Network show, actually, and uh, the bug bit me hard. I was in school for microbiology and chemistry, so that... I was going another route, a medical route, but I ended up being able to apply a lot of that to um, to brewing, and I got into brewing by just walking into a brew pub, La Jolla Brew House, years ago. Oh, wow. Walked in with growlers of beer and said, here's my resume, I'll start tomorrow. And they said, okay, I'll hire you. I said, okay, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I brewed water for two weeks and 
open valves and listened and wait until I could hear it and then run around and figure out which hole it was coming out of and wrote down the schematic of everything and then uh been doing that I've been brewing for like eight years I think now oh, but. Wow. where did you come from um I'm originally from Arizona <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I'm from New fine. Mexico. I understand. I'm, I'm well aware of exactly where you're <laughs> I'm from. from now, I get though, it. Okay? I understand. I, understand. <laughs> um, I grew up. I grew up in Arizona, and um, at a certain point, I was 19 years old, and I it was uh, it was 1999, 2000 time frame, and I was like, you know what? What am I really doing? I didn't graduate high school. I was getting my GED. I decided I'm going to join the United States Marine Corps, and I did five years in the United States Marine Corps. Thank you. Landed me in San Diego. No worries. You paid for my ammo at the time. That's all I needed. <laughs> um, and uh, after a few years of, of uh, living in San Diego, working government contracts, after I got out of the Marine Corps, um, going to school, uh, my former brother-in-law was actually a manager at Churchill's Pub and Grill, and they were losing their head of security, and he asked me to come over and start working security. A big guy, it was an automatic. From there, I got a real passion for craft beer. I'd had craft beer before, but it wasn't really something that I, you know, focused on. And there, I started I started working there, worked my way up through it within that, you know, within that establishment. Also worked for Lost Abbey. I did brewery tours for Scavengers Brewery Tour Company nice. as well. Oh, wow. yeah. I, I got to work with some really amazing people that really taught me all along the way. And I can't, I, I can't stress enough the, the type of mentorship that really comes on in this industry. It's not, it's not your competitor to me. I'm going to help you because that makes us all better. And yes. I, I, it's, yes. it's invaluable. And it allows me to be in this position. All boats. Yeah. It allowed me to be in this position. If I wasn't in this, if I didn't have the background that I had, both military, education, and beer industry, I wouldn't be effective at this job. Well, Churchill's is a place that gets a lot of the best of the best. You know, they've, mm. they've got good people. I mean, Ivan is, is awesome. AJ, <clears throat> they know good beer when they see it. And For sure. It's a good place to learn. It's a good place to get a good cross-section of, you know, the best beers out there. And it's a lot of fun to be able to have 50 drafts to be able to play with and buy whatever <laughs> yeah. you want and go, yeah. deal with this. This is, this is, this is <laughs> happening right now. Yeah. Well, awesome. So you, got, you gave us a couple hoppies. You gave us something that we still don't really know what it is. So <laughs> what are we finishing off with? Uh, this is our Dorcha Extra Stout. I am of Irish descent, so I needed to do something that was Irish in uh, uh, in its makeup. So not a lot of people make a foreign extra stout. I wanted to get take a shot at it. Um, so very Guinness simple. Guinness used to make a foreign extra stout way back in the day. Right? Yeah. In bottle. Yeah. In bottle yeah. Yeah. that beer. Same ABV. Really? 7.2%. So, yeah. Wow. Heavily inspired by that. Is that right? Yeah. So can you kind of give me like the low gen? What's the difference between an extra stout and a stout? Well, like Guinness is just basically stout. I mean, I guess would Irish stout, Irish dry stout. Um, but they actually have a huge market in um, the South African market is a huge purchaser of, uh, of Guinness. So they wanted to make a version for them. So it was much more heavily, just kind of like IPA, higher in alcohol, much more heavily hopped um, to suit their, their hotter climate. So when thinking of doing a stout for San Diego, I'm like, well, if it works for a tropical climate or the Caribbean or South African or wherever it ends up going, um, I thought it would be the right choice for here. You know what I mean? And so is extra stout mean like it's not as heavy? Is that what I'm understanding? No, it's or? bigger. So yeah. it's more bigger, heavy. okay, yeah. so it's more heavy, okay, yeah. okay. And okay. really, I mean, though being inspired by Guinness, we couldn't, Brian couldn't leave well enough alone on anything. You know, we had to add Muscat grapes to a Belgian. So for this, what has Guinness always been lacking in our personal palates? What do we always, what a lot of us go to is like, yeah, it's great. Where's the roast cake characteristic yeah. to it and everything yeah. like right. that. So we actually got Bird Rock Ro Roasters Coffee to do a proprietary blend of beans for us. We added molasses to kind of cut down the bitterness and we did some coconuts to really give it some of that nuttiness. And that's kind of where we took Guinness and go, Guinness wants to grow up to be this. Really? <laughs> really? Isn't that nice? <laughs> I could hardly oh, wait to try it. Gosh. I would pay good money to hear you tell Guinness that. Sure, guys. <laughs> wow. It's got a really well, good... They would just correct us on the Gaelic trend, uh, pronunciation yeah, so what of is beer. Dorcha? Anyways. Dorcha is a female given name. It basically means like uh, brunette or dark or dusky or enigmatic. Okay. Excellent. So... And no, Dorcha is not the correct Gaelic pronunciation. My mother has been able to tell me with the correct Gaelic pronunciation. I pitched that to Brian. He said no. So what's the correct? I have a hard time with it. It's it's. Dorcha. 
Yeah, Dorka. Dorka. Yeah. Like so, so like Sounds like dorky, so, so, so that's why so he was like, like you're no. a Dorka. Yeah. You're a female uh, dork. You're a Dorka. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I might be mysterious and dark-haired. I mean, that could be a possibility. Yeah. When I hear people there speaking Gaelic, it sounds Russian or something. Yeah. It's got that same, I don't know, is it... Uh, it's a know. weird but language. It's really weird. I mean, come on. We just got through the holidays. Everybody was listening to the Enya Christmas album in Gaelic. Like, let's be honest about this. <laughs> yeah. It's oh, fantastic. Wow. So I'm thinking ice cream floats. Yeah. <laughs> would be phenomenal with this. Tiramisu is, is a, a beautiful uh, pairing as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beer this would be, going. Tiramisu would be really good. Mm-hmm. So nice, like the lady nice, fingers in this. Nice heavy protein would really go you know, really well too. I'm thinking a nice barbecue or something. Mm-hmm. Nice yeah. steak. Wow. Just looking for something because everybody always leans towards the dessert side of stouts and there's so much to play with it. I mean, right. you're talking about a bitterness that you really can't attain anywhere else with right. the coffee and with the, you know, with the roasted barley and the, and the dark malts. Those, those give those real bitter notes that you've got to play off that. Pepper steak would be really Maybe like a demi glaze. Maybe some coffee grounds too. Some I've seen coffee guys rub coffee. some coffee grounds. Yeah, like a dry rub, some pepper. It'd be a great marinade now that I think about it. I yeah. used to do that with um, uh, some of the other stouts from some of the other companies I used to work for and just, you know, kind of sit it then. Yeah. Drop a little bourbon on it too. Nice. Little Fortify daddy. it. A little bourbon for me too. Hungry. A little bourbon for the. So stuff. you're saying for your anniversary party, we're gonna have this super awesome yes. feast. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a shame. Yeah, bring too, the steak. So. We'll bring the beer. How about that? I think I can handle that. I know, I know a steak guy. I know a steak guy. You got a guy. I got a guy for everything. I got a guy for everything. Come on. Right on, guys. Well, this is fantastic. Um, your website. Where can people find you online? Uh, all of the social medias at Pariah Brewing Co. Uh, www.pariahbrewingco.com. I like that you even use website. the www. You never know. HTTP. Colon black backslash backslash. Slash slash. Well, I mean, net neutrality, you know, when they shut it down two weeks ago, that was weird. They We're on the dark web now. They cut us off. <laughs> Crazy league. Well, thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Brian, for stopping by. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers to your one year anniversary. Yes. Cheers. Happy Cheers. one year. Yeah. All right, guys, so check it out. You now know where to go. You're in North Park. You stop by Pariah. You then, that's where you start, and then you go around because it's a phenomenal place. Stop by there. They have great beers, and wish them a happy one-year anniversary. Uh, thank you, guys, and thank you. cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers.